So you've heard me talk about malware several times already in this video series. Let's actually get into what malware is. Malware is a blanket term that means malicious code. So it's a general term that we use to talk about viruses, trojans, things like that. So what exactly is included in this malware blanket? Viruses, trojans, worms, spyware, dialers, keyloggers, and adware. Let's, so let's take a look at each of these and kind of learn more about what these things are, what they do. First, we have the virus. These are designed to attach themselves to a program. Just like a virus in the human body, the virus does not exist on its own. It doesn't do damage on its own. It has to attach to a host in order to do the bad stuff. This is what a virus does. It attaches itself to a program, to code. It can do a lot of different things depending on how it was written. It can be anywhere from an annoyance to very devastating. It can wipe out data. It can send out spam emails. I'm sure you've gotten emails from people that you've known and you're going, what's going on here? Why do I have this? It could be that they have a virus and it can do a lot more. Now, here's something that's completely wild. And this is why I said you had to have your computer up to date as well as your antivirus stuff up to date. Some computer experts, some security experts estimate that the number of new viruses released into the wild every week are over 100,000. Now, let me repeat that. Over 100,000 new viruses every week are released out there. Most of these are, of course, for the PC. Keep in mind that these 100,000 viruses are not always brand new viruses. They're usually variations on existing viruses. So this is why it's so important to make sure your computer's up to date, your antivirus is up to date, and you're using common sense. The next nasty little thing I want to talk about are Trojan horses. Trojan horses, of course, are named after that, you know, the horse that had the soldiers in it that they brought into the city and everybody's asleep and they come out. Meaning, in this case, that a Trojan horse is a program that the user downloads. You actually go out there and download this program because it might advertise it as being this great, oh, let's say social media program or uh, addition to a game or a patch or whatever. You download this program, it might do what it says it's doing, but also unknown to you at least, is that it's doing something in the background. It's doing something very bad behind the curtains. So those are Trojan horses. The next one is a worm. Unlike a virus, a virus member has to attach to existing program. A worm is a standalone program. They can travel from machine to machine through networks. And what we see here is that you can have infection numbers that are just staggering. You can have 50,000, 100,000, whoops, 200,000. You can see a ton of new infections fairly quickly because these things self-replicate. They are standalone. They don't need any help to infect other systems. We also find that they infect systems because of security flaws. Again, that comes back to make sure your stuff is updated. Spyware is another blanket term for software that gathers information about you and sends it to somebody else without your knowledge. This there's several things that fall under spyware and you can have spyware removal tools. Now we're seeing a lot of antivirus software come with spyware removal built in. Spyware gets kind of tricky. There have been companies that have sued different companies. So for example, Symantec releases Norton's antivirus. They've been sued by different spyware manufacturers saying, no, we're not spyware. We're a legitimate program. And there have been legal battles over classification of spyware. Another program that is kind of an older kind of a feel program, uh, bad stuff. This was more popular when people had modems on their computers by default are things called dialers. Dialers did just that. They would dial out from your computer without your knowledge, usually to 900 numbers or other places that would start to generate phone bills and you as the victim were responsible to pay that. Keyloggers is a type of spyware. Keyloggers keep track, they log what you're typing on your key, keyboard. So you're typing passwords, you're typing usernames, it's keeping track of what you're typing. So that's bad. You can actually buy key loggers 
and certain spyware as part of investigation stuff. So for example, I think there's like entire programs out there for cheating spouses. You can track what they're typing on their computers, stuff like that. The next one is AdAware. These are advertising supporting software, automatically renders advertisement in order to generate revenues for its author. I would say this is kind of a gray area because some of it, yes, can be considered not good, but at the same time, well-known places put adware on your computer they have adware built into their site they're trying to generate images trying to generate ads that the user's interested in the next one i want to talk about are some antivirus tools you have to have antivirus tools definitely on a pc the verdict's out on a mac i've run antivirus software on my mac i don't have any running right now again not because macs are more secure than pcs it's because those hundred thousand viruses are being written for pcs not so much for macs some antivirus tools that I recommend is AVG. This is free. Uh, they also have a paid version. Avast, free for home use, also pretty good. You have Clamwin, open source antivirus software, also free. And Microsoft Security Essentials. Now, I really didn't want to like Microsoft Security Essentials. I am not a Microsoft fanboy. And I really did not want to like this. But I got to tell you, we have a couple of PCs at the house. This is what they're running. It is very powerful and it's great for people who don't want to run antivirus don't want to deal with antivirus it runs it in the background it's out of your way no mess um, and it does antivirus and anti-spyware so definitely worth checking out and again completely free so here are some general tips on keeping yourself out of trouble when it comes to malware one i said this multiple times so it must be important keep your computer and your antivirus software up to date. And when I mean up to date, I mean at least a week's worth of being up to date. New viruses are released every week. You wanna make sure your computer and your software is updated once a week. You might need to update it twice a week, and if it says you need to update it twice a week, it means something really nasty is out there. And so if you've updated it on, let's say, a Tuesday, and another update comes out on a Thursday or Friday, that means something really, really bad is out there and you better patch that computer as quickly as possible. The next uh, hint for you, the next tip for you is scan all incoming programs and data. If you're downloading something, make sure you're scanning it. Scan your computer frequently. Some experts say scan it every day. You should scan it, I would say, once a week or if something starts to feel weird. And once you know your computer, you know when things are taking longer to load, things are acting a little bit odd but you should scan your computer, I would say at least once a week, full scan. Next, never, ever, 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 ever click on links or open attachments in emails unless you know for a fact that it was sent intentionally by the person who says it was sent by. What I mean by this is, let's say John, your best friend John, sends you an email with a link in it. You click on the link, hey, it's John, I've known John all my life, and now you've got a virus. Because John's computer had a virus, and John's computer sent out the virus to you. If you have a link, if you have a document, an attachment in an email, and you weren't expecting it, you might want to call John and say, hey, John, did you send me something? And if John says, yeah, I sent you a picture of the kids, then you go, okay, no problem. John might say, oh, I didn't send anything. So then you tell John that, you know, his computer's been places it shouldn't be, and he's got an infection. So, again, don't click on links or open attachments and emails unless you can actually verify that was sent. Our next topic, our last topic, our next topic is my absolute favorite. We're going to talk about social engineering, so come back for that. <laughs> 